Okay, team, tonight we're going to learn about China. And the West. Okay, so let's begin with a brief history of China. China, as you know, is about 4,000 years old. One of the reasons why China has been successful as a civilization is because it has um, abundant flooding of rivers. There are two main rivers in China, the Yangtze River and the Yellow River. And a little fun fact to impress all your friends, the silt that is left behind after a flood recedes is yellow, which is why they call the Yellow River the Yellow River. And this is also called Loess. Now when you talk about government, China is divided up into a series of dynasties. A dynasty is a collection of ruling families in China's history. Um, a typical dynasty will last about 300 years. Um, the most famous dynasties are ones you've already studied, like the Qin Dynasty, why we call China, China. The Han Dynasty are probably the two most famous of the ancient world. Um, so yeah, dynasties, don't forget it. Now one of the things that the emperors claim to have um, is the mandate of heaven, which is basically like saying that God wants me to be the ruler. Now this can work in your favor because people believe that it's true, but it can also work against you. So let's say something bad happens like an earthquake. Well, that may say to the people that God doesn't want you to be the emperor anymore. And so they may use that claim against you and overthrow you in favor of someone else. So as you can see right here in this map of China, China is a big country and it today has almost 1.5 billion, with a B, people in it. Okay, compare that to 7 million people in your country and about 300 million in the United States. So you can fit about 5 United States worth of population in China. Now as advertised, you see the Yellow River near Beijing. You can see the Yangtze River further south. Now, um, one of the dynasties in the ancient world created something called the Grand Canal that connects the two. So for that, you can connect a lot of the southern places where they grow more food with the northern places where you have bigger cities like Beijing. Now surely you remember this, the terracotta warriors of the Qin Dynasty. Qin Shi Huangdi, the, the first emperor as it's called, had all of these terracotta warriors um, underground buried in order to protect him in the afterlife. Uniquely, none of them are alike. They're all slightly different, which leads us to believe that they are based on real people. Included in this are horses and weapons, um, and even uh, servants, supposedly, in his tomb, which has not been opened yet. Here is a close-up. Fun fact, if you go eat at a royal Chinese restaurant near Azteca and donkey burritos, right when you enter, there is a uh, fake terracotta warrior. They did not pay me to say this, by the way. Ah, yes, something you can see from space. The Great Wall of China, built to keep the northern nomadic peoples like the Mongols and the Manchus out. It only works some of the time. Now, these last two photographs were taken by my friend, Jin, who recently returned from China. And this is a picture that she took going down one of the sections. I don't know if you're afraid of heights. I don't really care for them. However, looking at this scares me to death. So, go to China and check it out. When we think about China, we shouldn't only think about what they've done politically, but really what they've added to the world's culture. And this includes inventions such as printed paper, gunpowder, I like how in Spanish fireworks are called uh, Chinese lights because the Chinese get credit for developing fireworks, thus gunpowder. A compass, or to your generation, an ancient GPS machine and also a printing press. Both the woodblock printing press and the movable type printing press. To put it in perspective, the Chinese developed 
the same type of printing press that Gutenberg did in Europe only about 900 years earlier. Besides just inventing cool things, China also developed complex institutions that others would copy. One of these is called a bureaucracy. A bureaucracy is an organized government. Sometimes you'll hear someone called a bureaucrat. This is someone who works in government. And then the wonderful philosophies of the ancient world, like Confucianism, Taoism, Legalism, and Yin and Yang. So China has been developing philosophies for thousands of years. So the period we're looking at is really when the West, thus Europe, comes into contact with China. Now, after the Mongol dynasty, called the Yuan dynasty, the Chinese started to rule themselves again in the Ming dynasty. Ming means brilliant or bright um, in the late 1300s. With this, Europe um, starts to come to China more and more often for religious reasons as well as commercial reasons. Most notably, the Ming rulers restored a sense of peace and prosperity to China after 100 years of Mongol rule. Now the Mongols weren't all that bad, they just weren't all that good either. Okay, And so China during that time period didn't really grow as much as they had in earlier time periods. So the Ming brought back the bureaucracy, they brought back the civil service exams, if you remember that, so the smartest people serve in government, and they will also stay in touch with Europe. One of the greatest Ming emperors is called Yang Lo, and he also began building this palace called the Forbidden City. Guys, look how small the people are. And then you get a sense of just how big this building is. Now for those of you who are going to see the Forbidden City Palace at some point, you need to know what you're looking at and where you're going. This is a diagram. Now, According to rumor, they built this palace with 9,999.5 rooms. Don't ask me how you get 0.5 rooms. Why? Good question. Now, according to legend, the Taoist Heavenly Palace has 10,000 rooms in it. So the Chinese didn't want to build something that was bigger than their Heavenly Palace by Taoist standards, so they built one that was half a room smaller. Now the Ming will welcome the Europeans. This isn't the first time Europeans have come to China because the Mongol dynasty under Kublai Khan, the Yuan dynasty, welcomed Marco, Polo. Among the first Europeans to arrive were missionaries. Now among the first European visitors to China during the Ming dynasty were the Jesuits. Remember the Jesuits were missionaries that were formed in Europe after the Reformation. Now the Jesuits were better and more effective at converting the Chinese to Christianity than other groups like the Franciscans or the Dominicans because they did so following two separate tactics. They didn't threaten the Chinese culture um, and they also showed that the Chinese culture is worthy of studying. Now what I mean by this is the first time the Jesuits appeared at the Chinese court to talk to them about Christianity. The Jesuits were wearing Chinese clothes and speaking Chinese to the Chinese emperor. So it shows that they are accepting that China's culture is worthy of studying. So the Chinese felt like they respected them. And then the second thing that they did was they found common parallels between Christianity and Confucianism. So it wasn't like the Jesuits were saying, study our religion because ours is better than yours. Instead, it's like, hey, you have this belief system. We have this belief system. Here are some things they have in common. Want to learn more? In addition to missionaries, Europeans also show up to trade with the Chinese. Now there are certain Chinese products that are demanded in Europe. Um, and so these European merchants are in charge of making sure they arrive in Europe for people to buy. Now there, these things would include um, things that the Chinese make very, very well, which includes silk, porcelain, and tea. Silk is the fabric that is made from silkworms. Um, it's very labor intensive. It costs a lot of money to make something out of silk, and the Chinese do it better than anyone else. Um, this is a state secret. So they are as good at making silk as the Persians are at making carpets. Um, 
Porcelain is another name for china that we would call today. So especially like um, bowls, okay, or plates, okay, with, um, with designs, sort of like the one that you saw on the opening slide of this presentation. That is a Ming um, vase. And then lastly, tea. Uh, we know that tea is very popular in Europe and especially so in England where every afternoon they have tea time. And lastly, the Ming will try to facilitate uh, relations with other groups in the world by sending one of their greatest admirals, called Zheng He, on a series of distant voyages. Now take a look at these two boats. What are these boats for ants? Nope, these are ship models. Now, the big one is a model of Zheng He's flagship. The small one is a model of Christopher Columbus's flagship. Okay, Note, these are from the exact same time period. Questions! Answer these for tomorrow. Where did Zheng He go? Give me specifics. And lastly, why did he go to these places? What was his mission? Thanks, and have a good night.